Hey guys, so I'm a little bit late on this story and I'm hoping that by the time I post this video, new information isn't out because that's what usually happens with YouTubers. You film a video, you edit it, and then you get around to uploading it and like some breaking bit of the story comes through. So that's really cool. I hope that doesn't happen. If it does, I'll just do like a voiceover or something. Instagram, Twitter, follow me on there. It's a fun time. Why did that become a song all of a sudden? Also second channel in the description. It's where I post all my me stuff and we're like 10K away from 100K. So if you guys want to be a part of that, then subscribe and watch the five videos that are on there. Today we're talking about Colleen Ballinger, 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 who is also responsible for the character of Miranda Sings. I'm saying it's like a, like it's some kind of a crime. Oh, she's responsible for Miranda Sings. No, I've just never watched Miranda Sings or Colleen Ballinger. I think when I found Miranda Sings, I wasn't really sure what was happening. I was like, wait a minute, what is this? And then when I realized, I was like, oh, this isn't that fun. I don't know, I just, I'm just not a big fan of skits, at least not now. And I think I was a little bit too old by the time I found Miranda Sings, so it just wasn't that funny anymore. And because I wasn't a big fan of Miranda, I just don't think I was a big fan of Colleen either. It was just like a whole thing, but I don't really care either way. It's what I'm trying to say. Like there's no tea, no shade. I neither hate her nor love her, is what I'm attempting to say in simple language. But recently a guy called Adam McIntyre came out and made a video about Colleen. He is currently a 17 year old YouTuber like a small YouTuber, I think he's on about like 12k subs, but he was actually posting videos before any of this went down. I just want to make that very clear because I think sometimes when people don't have any like social media presence and they post a YouTube video exposing someone, people do claim that it's like a clout chasey thing, but he has been posting before this and it's never been like exposey stuff, so I think this is very like off brand for him and he's not known for exposing people, so I just want to put that out there just in case there's some kind of like a like, why is he just posting this video? Why can't you just talk to her? And I'll get into why he can't talk to her in a second and what happened. So, he met Miranda in 2012 when he was about 13 years old. He's actually 17 years old now. He made fan pages about her from 2013 to 2014. He has, like, a Twitter account for her. And then in about 2016, Miranda... Did I just keep on calling her Miranda? <gasps> No. Colleen found his Twitter while she was on live with one of her friends, Corey. She really like, they thoroughly enjoyed his um, Twitter account. So she just started talking to him. She also offered to send him the lingerie that Corey was wearing on top of his clothes, which I thought was really strange considering at the time, I think he was 15-ish. When they started talking, it got very weird very quickly and not in like that sense, but as in she would talk to him about her divorce with Josh. I believe she was married to this guy called Josh when they had this like family-esque channel where they vlogged and apparently Adam was a huge fan of their videos and then obviously he was kind of distraught when him and her had a divorce and then she started talking to him at this young age of like 14 about her divorce and then she would get him to like go out and get tea on Joshua to get tea on her fans on other youtubers and bring him back to him and I actually want to mention do you guys remember when Jack and Hill filmed that video where she was like that she was at Colleen's Christmas party and they were doing like an ask me any question thing we sit in the middle and they just fire like questions at you. Colleen in front of everyone basically went to Jack and was like, did you know that your lipsticks were gonna, you know, turn out the way they did? And Jack was like, no, oh my god, I can't believe even like my fellow creators and colleagues think I'm like a scam, a fraud. And then people found old like interviews of Colleen basically just saying that she like loves shady stuff. I can't remember what the interview said exactly, but it was just basically that she's like a shady person. Look up! Miranda, or Colleen, or Miranda. <laughs> right, um, depending on which, when, where she's at. Colleen is the best because she needs 10 of these fans. She is the most hateful, shadiest. I love her. Like, whenever we hang out, uh, literally the first words out of her mouth are, okay, like, what do you got? Who do you hate? Who's next? Like, just going in on everybody. I love it. Oh, You gotta fine. get her on here. <laughs> oh, I would love to. It's rough. She, Please throw in a good word for yeah. us. <laughs> That's the thing is a lot of, you, a lot of well, I guess, comedians in general, like, a lot of the comedy comes from hate, self-hatred. Uh -huh. And when you hate yourself, you hate everybody around you. Right. So. so she seems to, like, love the drama a little bit behind the scenes. So that was kind of the, the situation. So she would get this 14-year-old to go out and get gossip on her ex-husband and like other youtubers and stuff and bring it back to her and then his parents actually found out about these conversations and they felt you know uncomfortable which is understandable and they basically just started monitoring his conversations with her like they were still supportive of the fact that this is his favorite youtuber that is now messaging him and they were like yes you can continue talking to her but we will monitor like the conversations because they're starting to take a really weird turn he actually started getting attacked on like those hate forums for youtubers and stuff where they hate on absolutely anyone and anything that breathes walks and talks and happens to be more successful than them and i guess maybe some of like colleen's fans maybe were angry that they weren't the ones that have this relationship with her and then they started you know just having a go at him this 14 year old child which just you know 
debatable at best. So his parents kind of asked him to distance himself from her a little bit, but obviously he kept on getting pulled back in by, well, first of all, this was his favorite YouTuber. And second of all, she would put him in with like all these rewards almost. She'd be like, well, you know, like I'll fly you out to VidCon or I'll fly you out as part of the competition as one of my fans. Cause she was going to do this thing where she flies out her fans to America and that never happened, but he was supposed to be one of those fans. And he just kept on getting like just pulled back in with some kind of like a reward. He would get subs from this or followers. And I'm assuming that's also why he got a lot of hate because they were like, oh, he's probably just doing this so you can get, you know, fame. So during this whole time, he said he was 13 to 15. I'm not saying there's anything like sketchy going on. I don't think she's like a danger to society, but it's just a little bit strange for a 30 year old woman, I don't know how old she is, but she's a grown adult, to be discussing, you know, inner details of her divorce with someone between the ages of 13 and 15. Mainly because as a fan of them, he was obviously attached to this relationship and then to see like the, the messy insides of, of their relationship and their divorce must be a little bit like icky to like see your favorite couple split up but not only see them split up but also know exactly why they split up and what each party did and kind of like be dragged into the mess of that and divorces are messy so i just think it's a lot it was very strange and like it must have just been a really weird situation for him so about the lingerie thing when he received it he was actually 13 is what i have on here but so they sent it to him when he was 13 and his parents obviously once they found out that that's what he was sent they took it away from him but his mom actually kept it so he actually before he filmed this video he asked her if she still had it and they spent all morning looking for it and she did so he shows on camera and it's the exact same you know lingerie as they had in the live stream and he shows you know a lot of proof just in general he's actually from dublin so when colleen went over to dublin i believe for her tour he said that she asked if he wanted to meet up for lunch and his mom was understandably quite uncomfortable with this but she said fine you can go but i'll stay down the street just in case anything happens which i think is probably one of the most responsible parents i've heard of in recent years when it comes to like meeting your idols and fans meeting idols because i think sometimes things can go definitely wrong i mean we don't know these people just because they're famous doesn't mean they're not dangerous so I just think it was a very, you know, smart decision for her to be like, you can go, but I'm going to be keeping an eye on you. So after all of that happened, they had a big old chat, you know, how Miranda's kind of going down the drain now. Like no one's really interested in Miranda. It's kind of what I said. People aren't interested in like the fake skit stuff anymore. That's what kind of used to be big when YouTube was first starting out and it seemed so professional and you were like, oh my God, I didn't realize people could make these like full production skits on YouTube. And now it's just kind of like, you know, it's just not that fun to watch anymore because you just kind of know the whole time that it's fake. So she was kind of realizing that her Miranda Sings career was coming to a, a, a an end, but he was still, you know, Know, kind of like convinced that he, they could revive it so she messages him and she asks him to help her on multiple occasions with the Miranda Sings account and just to kind of get it going again so he just you know gives her some like advice because he does run like a meme account for Miranda Sings which is pretty successful so he was just like yeah here's like some stuff you can tweet out and he was actually responsible for the Megan Trainer tweet if you don't know what happened she was like teasing this like coming out video which people were expecting well, I don't know what people expect from Miranda Sings, but people are expecting something. And then it happened that she would just like tweet out this meme, like I'm coming out as a fan of Megan Trainor or something like that. It was just like a very meme tweet. And people started, you know, calling her out for queer baiting. She on that day gave him full access to her account, just said like, go crazy. You don't have to run anything past me, but he still did. He was like, can I post this? Can I post this? And every time he posted, he was like, am I allowed to do that? And she approved every single thing and she was loving it until people started giving her some backlash. And then she started getting really like, you know, pissy with him she was like you know people are giving me some shit for this you know he's getting a little bit mm. and he's like no don't worry like twitter drama stays on twitter like a lot of the time this wouldn't have made it to youtube if she had just left it but he was showing her statistics of how much her account was growing because of him and she, he was like look at all this interaction you're getting you haven't had this much traction on your twitter account in a while so i think you know this is worth it she's like no like this is a little bit you know like i'm a little bit stressed out because of this and she almost with every message started pushing the blame more onto him and bear in mind at that point he's still like 16 in his head he's like well you approved all these tweets i'm not really sure where the problem is and actually before all of this happened like before the meltdown she actually said that if this all goes well she'll offer him like an intern position like a part-time job to be her social media manager he'll just be like posting on her social media just to keep things going and i think he was kind of also upset that he was kind of seeing that this opportunity was now getting away from him because she seems to be pushing the blame towards him more and more which you know indicates some kind of like a this probably won't happen anymore this job that would have been like the dream job for him is to work for his idol and work on social media do basically what he was already doing on his parody account but just get paid for it it's incredible you know at that age as well so i think he must have been slightly like disappointed that this was happening but also quite like 
shocked and surprised that she was now pushing all this blame on him when she was the one that approved the tweet. So then she started almost like guilt tripping him and blame shifting and he said he was super upset the whole day. Understandably, you know, when you get called out by one of your you know, favorite YouTubers, it, it must be a little bit devastating. Also, he is 16, well now 17, but you know, at the time he wasn't old. So it's if I'm getting the ages wrong, there was a lot of ages. It was, you know, around the like 13 to 16 age gap. And then when all of this went down, he sent her one last message, just basically saying like, I didn't appreciate the fact that you would blame all of this on me when you were the one that approved the messages. It was a big paragraph. And she basically just ignored him, which must be kind of devastating. She could have at least said like, oh, you know, like that's fine, but I think we should just go our separate ways now. That would have been a little bit more like, a bit more of a conclusion than just leaving him on red. And then her friend, the one from the live stream, Corey, went and apparently was DMing a lot of Colleen fans and basically talking shit about Adam. And then he was, you know, liking some shady tweets and tweeting out like subtweets. And it was like a very just petty and childish thing. I think that's also why I don't really watch even just her videos because she gives me these weird petty childish vibes. I don't know if that's her. I haven't watched enough of her content. Like I think I've watched like one or two videos altogether from her channel and I can't really make up my mind based on that. But I just, to me, she gives off like really weird, like petty childish vibes, almost like teenage drama. Yeah. And then he actually tweeted out with more info. He tweeted out just basically saying like, I'm seeing a lot of people are bringing up old screenshots of stuff and saying that things aren't adding up. But in reality, like I can explain all of this with more screenshots. I just didn't want to like overwhelm you guys with screenshots in the first video. But if you guys want me to film a follow-up video with more screenshots and more like timestamps and stuff, I will do that. So he seems to have a lot of proof. Here's the thing. None of this is confirmed, but also Colleen hasn't come out and said anything about it. As of filming this video right now, she hasn't said anything about it. But he seems to have a lot of screenshots and a lot of chats and a lot of proof and pictures and, and stuff for me to kind of not believe him. But if she comes out with some kind of a Uno reverse card, then fine. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at at the moment with all of this. I think it's a little bit strange for a full on adult to just be like, here's my divorce information. Here, find some tea for me. And then once they mess up, even though they didn't mess up because you approved all the tweets, you just discard them as if they were never like a part of your life. If you think about it, they spent like a whole three years being in like direct contact with each other. So I just think it's a little bit strange to then leave this like poor kid on red when he made a mistake. That wasn't really a mistake because you approved it. So that can't be a mistake then. It could be your mistake, but not his mistake. But also he's also just 16. So even if he tweeted this out, you should have known better, one. But two, for you to treat him like that is a little bit strange considering he is so young and the impact that will have on him for his favorite YouTuber to, you know, have a go at him and then leave him on red. I just think this whole situation should have been completely avoided by simply not making friends with fans half your age and then telling them your personal information and then discarding them the moment you believe that they made a mistake. I think this whole thing could have been avoided. I'm waiting for Colleen to come out and be like, here's the tea, here's what's happening. But she hasn't done that yet. And it's been a few days. I've given her a few days. I've been waiting on this and she doesn't seem to be responding. So yeah, let's get into some more little stories because we have some time. So, you know, let's get into those. Trisha Paytas apologizes to Stephanie Sue and says that it was all due to like substances that she was doing all of that. And I'm wondering if that's also the reason for all her other troll videos, if that's just like a whole separate thing but i'm glad she's you know acknowledging mistakes i wish she would acknowledge some other mistakes as well like the did thing and the transgender thing those situations but at least we're making a step forward i'm glad we're doing that the next thing is both charlie d'amelio and addison ray both huge tiktok stars have now started addressing the body shaming they get on the internet charlie Anderson, they both kind of posted screenshots of stuff that they've been receiving like oh you're too skinny you're too fat some even went as far as to call addison ray a whale when she literally looks so stunning uh, and she's also so young they're both like 15 16 and like i kind of mentioned in my last few videos i'm wondering what the psychological implications of being famous at such a young age will be for these people. Because when you're a celebrity, you're a lot more distant from the criticism or the hate. With, you know, TikTok, Instagram, it's all so sudden. You post a picture and, you know, the comments just start flooding in and then it's an open gate of hate. And I just think people need to leave them alone. It's insane that you would go on the internet and call a 15 year old child a whale when they look 
stunning and you know whatever shape and size they'll call people whale and then with charlie it's you know you're too skinny eat more you're too fat eat less and it's like people can never make up their minds and if she had listened to everyone she'd be bouncing around different weights when she can just stay the way she is she she's healthy she dances exercises a lot why are we doing this why are we commenting on teenagers bodies is it that necessary recently natalia taylor posted a video and she in that video talks about you know how she's been feeling lately just going over her mental health which is all good and well and then she goes swiftly into a better help sponsorship and a lot of people have dm me about it and they said they just felt highly uncomfortable the way she went about it because she did actually a few years go on a hiatus where she just didn't upload for a year because of like some kind of a mental breakdown so people knowing this past obviously got very scared when she posted that video and then you're watching it and she swiftly moves into a better help ad which is like online therapy which i understand in these times online therapy would be incredible for people but not advertise like that i just think it was very strange and she put in a pinned tweet and it, it just makes me feel a little icky like those kind of situations just aren't my favorite i just think it's a really weird way to advertise therapy by like scaring people into thinking you're like having a mental breakdown again essentially and the next thing is recently i came across a logan paul vlog with daisy keach it's a vlog that's probably like a year old where he does this thing where he buys a huge fan and he picks up a homeless man off the street and he says, I have a game for you, come along with me. And he basically kidnaps this man and he takes him to his garden and he's got all these like influencers and his friends in the garden. And one of them is Daisy Keach and one of her friends. Daisy Keach is, you know, the one from the Hype House. The reason I'm kind of bringing her up is because recently there was some drama between her and Thomas. Her, Thomas and Chase were allegedly the ones that started Hype House and they put money into the Hype House. Allegedly, Daisy put in the most along with Chase, I think, and then Thomas put in the least. And now Thomas was almost acting like the gatekeeper to like, emails and private information that they had about the hype house he's basically behaving like the jake paul of team 10 she has this lawyer that can start taking care of their things he was like oh i don't trust him he's like can, can we get access to the emails and he was like no only our management has access to the emails they don't want anyone to have access to the email she was like well i won't reply to anything i just want to see what's coming in because you know through your management you get sponsorships and deals so she was like i just want to see what's coming in just so that you know i know i'm not getting scammed and she says it's very weird because they worked before and he said that she never paid him for his work before but he for some reason had five grand to put into the hype house investments like where did you get this five grand from if she was paying you nothing and then he claims that she paid him a little bit of money before they started the hype house anyway and then she starts talking about the fact that you know he's claiming that they're not getting all these like brand deals so she's not getting any money and he's popping up with like cartier bracelets and he's talking about buying a tesla and she's like with what money because i'm not seeing any of it and you should be making money from like what money i make so it was a whole situation where she put in so much money and allegedly according to her she was getting scammed is what she thinks and she's now dropped out of the hype house and she's starting her own house called the clubhouse and i think I think Charlie is actually gonna be a part of it because Charlie's kind of slowly moving away from the hype house because of her and Chase's breakup and that whole situation. And she actually liked the trailer for the clubhouse on Daisy's Instagram. But let's bring it back. A few months back, she films this video of Logan Paul. Like I said, the homeless man and all of them are in the garden and he brings out 20, 30 grand in cash, 20 grand maybe. And he says, I'm gonna, you know, throw it up against the fan and the fans are gonna push the money out at you guys and you have like a minute to catch as much cash as you can. And obviously what Logan Paul is thinking is that all of his rich friends, you know, one of those friends being Daisy, who a few months later put 15 grand to invest in the hype house. So she has got money from somewhere, right? Like probably Instagram brand deals, fashion over stuff, all that good and he's probably in his head thinking, my friends are kind enough and nice enough that once they catch all this money and the game's over, they'll give the money to the homeless man. Like, I'm pretty sure Logan Paul intended for the video to go like that. It'll be everyone's having fun, catching money, and then at the end, they all give it to the homeless man. And it's like a nice, you know, soppy story of like, oh, melt your heart. So he's throwing the money, everyone's like catching it. And this homeless man is the most sensible one there. He's only picking up the stuff that's already fallen on the ground. He's like, I'm not gonna, you know, fight over this stuff. You guys have it, it's fine. I'll just pick up the stuff off the floor. And it was just the sweetest thing to watch him be considerate of other people, even though they have like so much more money than him, obviously. But he was still being considerate of, you know, other people catching money. It was all good and well. He caught like a thousand, I think. So the game finishes and Logan looks at the camera and silently goes, I want to see who the first one will be to give him the money. And I think because of that one person, the rest will follow. But I want to see who the first person is who does it just out of the goodness of their heart. And it's one of his closest friends. So he, you know, says, I got like three grand, but I want to give it to you. So he gives it to a homeless man. It's like a great story. And then everyone else slowly starts giving in money. And the two girls, one of them was Daisy Keach, just didn't give him the money. They stood there and they held on to this like money. I think he maybe caught like a grand or two. They were like holding on to it like really awkwardly and everyone was giving him the money and they were like, 
hiding it behind their back oh my god it like blew my mind when i was watching i was like is your fashion over deal not like good enough you literally post pictures on instagram for money like how why would you take that kind of an opportunity from someone who clearly needs the money more than you and she knows she's doing something shady because she's like holding the money behind her back she's like and at that point mike one of logan's close friends goes like if you're not giving this man the money you're not human like how can you stand there and just hold on to the money what are you gonna do buy yourself some gucci loafers when he clearly could use that to buy food and like water and necessities you know some maybe warm clothes but you're probably gonna go on like a gucci shopping spree and he's looking at them and he's going like there are some ladies here who are not giving away their money and i think it's really shady that they're not giving away their money and they both laughed at the fact that he was shaming them he was actually shaming them in front of millions of viewers and they stood there and laughed because they saw nothing wrong with what they were doing and the service man was just so appreciative he was like thank you guys for everything they drove him back he left the house with you know a few extra grand and i just thought it was the sweetest story ever and they just got to keep the money so you know relaying that back i saw a few comments under that vlog saying oh and now she's claiming that she was scammed by this thomas guy but when she was asked to do this one charitable thing she couldn't do it so like karma i guess i don't know what to say guys karma <laughs> it does its thing i'm not saying she deserves to be scammed but you know good people have usually good things happen to them because that's how karma works so maybe if she had given that man the money now she wouldn't be in the place that she's in getting scammed allegedly anyway if you guys enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up comment down below anything comment down below and subscribe because i post videos every time something happens so hit that bell and you'll be notified when that's happening second channel and social media links in description and i'll see you in my next one bye guys